Ellis, let's take a look at the projected Yankees lineup right now and give people a sense of what it would look like. And it's got Judge batting second, nestled between DJ LeMayhew and Glaber Torres. Aaron Hicks and John Carlos Stanton could very well be healthy and back. And this is a fluid group. You got to remember that in a 60 game season, Yankees did have 155 different lineup combinations last season. So we talked about the impact of Judge. But how about a healthy Giancarlo Stanton and the impact flash that he could have in that DH spot? Yeah, I think it's going to be huge. And, you know, one of the things that raised my eyebrow the other day when I listened to Aaron Boone and he talked about Stanton possibly DHing early on, uh, you know, I don't know if he's still coming back from that injury and they want to take it slow. But the first thought that came to my mind is the Yankees are a better defensive club if Giancarlo Stanton is DHing. Obviously, the big bat in the middle of the lineup. But it's a way where you can get Gardner in the lineup and Hicks, who has come back so quickly from Tommy John. You start looking at that defensive outfield with Gardner, Hicks, and Judge, and you could put it up against any, any threesome in the league. So I think Stanton, if he can stay healthy, DHing early on, maybe he starts working his way into some outfield drills and some outfield play as the season progresses. But I think that lineup that we just saw defensively is the best lineup the Yankees can put out there. John, as I look at that lineup and I'm thinking, how are opposing pitchers going to try and navigate through that lineup? There's a guy who's missing. Miguel Andujar isn't even in that lineup, and we know the yep. Yankees are going to figure out a way to get him some action. 2018, 850 OPS, 27 homers, 47 doubles. Obviously, the right shoulder injury in 2019. You're Aaron Boone. How are you getting Andujar some at-bats this year? Well, it's going to be somewhere in the outfield, some play maybe some days at third base, maybe some days at first, and maybe some DH days. I mean, you got to find a way to get his bat back in the lineup, guys, because when you look at that lineup as an old catcher, you know, the names jump out at you. Okay, I don't want Judge to beat me. I don't want Stanton to beat me. And then all of a sudden you're going down and you have Gary Sanchez waiting, Aaron Hicks, guys like that, or Shella, who had a big year for the Yankees last year. And I think of Van Duhar and how he kind of burst onto the scene and was hitting down in the lineup, and he wasn't the focal point of the opposing team's game plan. Well, now he's going to be doing the same thing. I mean, he's going to be an afterthought in this lineup, and when you don't really pay attention to Andujar, he's such an aggressive hitter early in the count that he'll ambush you and do some serious damage. So Aaron Boone is going to have so many things early on this year that he's going to have to pay attention to and be careful with. But one of the situations with Andujar, finding a way to get him at bats because it's such a valuable bat that you would love to have in your lineup. You know, we've talked at least about last season and the season before about so many injuries and how they impacted the club and the time that guys missed. We've already touched on him, but Aaron Hicks, just the ability to stay out there healthy and the fact that, and I found this interesting, Jack and I, when we talked or listened to Garrett Cole earlier, he pointed out he's the only position player he knows of in history that won't miss a game after having Tommy John surgery. That for the Yankees could be huge. That healthy arm and hopefully every other part of him, including his obliques, staying healthy and the impact he could have. Yeah, I mean, health is going to be such a big factor for every club. But Aaron Hicks coming back this quickly from an injury is great news. Uh, I think about him in center field, you know, the gold glove type of center fielder he is. Uh, the switch hitter in the lineup is so valuable because you can hit him in so many different spots. And, you know, if you're going to point out a weakness, and I don't really think it's a weakness in today's game, the Yankee lineup is very heavy right-handed hitters. So Aaron Hicks mixing in there as a switch hitter is going to help out. Brett Gardner getting some reps in left field, being a left-handed hitter, that's going to help Aaron Boone out. But to your point, Bob, Aaron Hicks is such an important part of this team, not only for what he does on the defensive side, but the quality of bats, seeing a lot of pitches, grinding out of bats, working some walks, uh, he's going to be a valuable piece no matter where he slots in. I think you could probably make the statement that a lot of players, and this is a one-year anomaly, 60-game season. Everybody hopes that. But they'll benefit from that and the ability to play with a sprint to the finish. How much do you think Gary Sanchez could benefit from that? I, I'm, I'm intrigued to watch how this is going to play out, Bob, because Gary Sanchez, over the course of a long season, has had his share of injuries. And now if you only play 60 games, Will he have a better chance to stay on the field day in and day out? And again, I go back to Aaron Boone. Are you going to push a Gary Sanchez because you know that you only have 60 regular season games and then hopefully postseason? Or are you still going to treat him the same way that you have in the past? Give him some days off. Try to give him some DH days so you can keep his legs underneath him. Again, I, 
in a 60 game season, if I was an everyday catcher, I would love to be out there for 50 of those games. Uh, if you're, you know, you have the right mentality and you can stay out on the field. I don't know if Aaron Boone is going to do that, but I'm kind of intrigued to watch over a shortened season if Gary Sanchez can stay healthier than he has in the past. Obviously, it would be a, a big bonus for the Yankees. So, John, I'm crediting you and me and Bob with our first error of the year because we're this <laughs> deep into the discussion, and we haven't even mentioned DJ LeMahieu, who was only yeah. fourth in the AL MVP voting last season. How probable do you think it is that LeMahieu can duplicate what he did last season? And what about the fact that he has a walk year looming? He's a free agent after this year. Yeah, I'm sure he's happy, obviously, to get back to playing because of that, Jack. But uh, I think it's easy to overlook DJ LeMayu. And, and the only reason I think people do is because his personality is so level. Uh, there's not a whole lot of ups and downs. And, and he's just one of those players that he produces every day, but there's no fanfare about it, right? So I think that's why maybe we've been so deep in this conversation and finally his name is going to come up. But to your original question, I don't think there's any doubt that D.J. LeMayu is going to do what he did last year. Lead-off guy who kind of flies under the radar, like I just said. You know, if I'm catching against the Yankees and LeMayu comes up to the plate, I have to go right at him because I know I have the big boys coming, coming behind him. With all that being said, he's going to get a lot of pitches to hit. He uses the whole field. He drives the ball the other way. And from a teammate's perspective and a manager's perspective, he's a dream, dream teammate because there's no fanfare, there's no drama. He just goes out there every day, and he does it on both sides of the baseball. Flash curious how to feel putting a shirt and tie back on again. You know what? It didn't feel great, I'll be honest <laughs> with you, but I, I, I figured what I would do is throw the white shirt against the background of the white wall, and that way the tie's really going to pop a little bit. Well, you stand out as well, and that's what we always count on here at Yes.